Good morning, everyone. Reverend Keith Phillips here on the line with uh, day nine of hope in our uh, 31 days of prayer in unity, healing, and hope. Uh, I'll come from John 1, verses 1 through 14, skipping a couple of verses. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, this passage didn't mention the word hope specifically. But from this passage, uh, I come up with three quick points of why we should have hope as Christians. From verse 4, it says, Jesus, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus, the source of life, is also the light for us. Light is commonly used in the Bible as an emblem of God. Darkness is used to denote death, ignorance sin, and separation from God. Isaiah described the coming of salvation as the people living in darkness seeing a great light. So we should have hope because Jesus, as the light, is our source of life. Another reason comes from verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Light's nature is to shine and to dispel darkness. Darkness is almost personified in this verse. Darkness is unable to overcome light. By this summarize uh, of the gospel in John, light will invade the dominion of darkness. Satan and the ruler and his subjects will resist the light, but they will be unable to frustrate its power. We as Christians will be victorious in spite of opposition, and that's why we should have hope because Jesus' light dispels the darkness. And then verse 11, he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. In some ways, this is one of the saddest verses in the The logo, the word, went to his own home, but he had no welcome. Jesus went to his own people, the nation of Israel, but they rejected him wholly. In rejecting him, they refused to accept him as the revelation sent by the Father and refused to obey his command. Isaiah prophesied long before that the Jewish nation would be unbelieving. Who has believed our message? And the final reason we should have light comes from verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Verse 12. That unbelief was not universal, the Jewish unbelief. Some received Jesus' universal invitation, and to all who received and accepted Jesus as the revealer of the Father's will and as the sacrifice for sin, he gave the right to become the children of God. People are not naturally born children of God, but can become so by receiving the gift of the new birth. And that is why we as Christians should have hope. 
That's why we should have hope. If you are a child of God, you have been adopted into his family because of the work of Christ. Because of that, no matter what is happening in the world around us, you have eternal life. With God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit in heaven, we can have hope because we have Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, this morning we come humbly before you, thanking you for waking us up, thanking you for the breath in our lungs and our hearts beating this morning. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. Jesus, we thank you for giving your life for our sins. Because of the sacrifice that you made, we can be called children of the Most High God. Because of what you did for us, we have been adopted into the family of the saved. And because of, what, because of that, we can call God our Father. Because you bore our sins on the Christ, Lord, on the cross, Lord, we do not have to dwell in our sins anymore. We can have hope because we have been set free. Thank you, Jesus. And also because we are children of the Most High, we can and should have hope. We should have hope, thank you, Lord, for this world. And we can have hope, Lord, because of the light we will have in life we will have in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we can have hope because you defeated death and rose from the grave, because you have all power in your hand. So Lord, as we go into this day, let us have hope. Father God, internally, and let us display that hope to a lost and dying world, Father God, that someone might ask us, where is this hope that we have? And if so, Lord, then give us the word to introduce people to your son, Jesus Christ, so that they may have hope also. It's in your precious name we pray, Jesus, and we thank you this morning. Amen. Amen.